He's just singing. Oh, so, with the yeah, sound. We have a happy birthday, and my aunt has a great voice. <laughs> That's all it was. Uh, you know, uh, we do so many different things on the program, and, and we always try to not only uh, be fun, obviously, and not only to, you know, present you music and, and comedy, um, but we like to educate the listener at times and, and learn about uh, the events going on in this world. And, and Brody and I, we, we have opinions on things, but they're not from an expert point of view. So we said, you know what? Why don't we bring in Sandra Ziskind from Diamond and Diamond Lawyers and, and, and just to ask her what's going on in the world of law? Because this is the stuff that makes headlines on the daily. And here she is. Hi, Sandra. Hi, how are you? I got your last name right. You got it perfect. Thank you. Thank, nice. I, I appreciate uh, you coming. Do, do, do you like to do a lot of the media stuff? Do you get in front of the mic and cameras I do. I do. I don't. Uh, I like to do it. I don't get to do it as often as I'd like. This is way more fun than some of the other stuff I have to do. So certainly I love this. Yeah, because because I mean, uh, the lawyer business is tough, man. You, you it's guys... tough. And it's trauma season for us right now. So I've been going from Sunnybrook to St. Mike's. I've been running around like a crazy person today. So so when you say trauma season, what do you mean by that? It's now is the season where the worst accidents tend to happen. It just started now. I know people think it's the winter yeah. time, but it's not. It's not. It's actually right now because the weather gets nicer. People start drinking and driving, texting and driving, speeding. Pedestrians are out more in force. And I I had a few pedestrians get slammed this, this past week. Wow. wow. Well, that's so, so diamond and diamond personal injury lawyer. Of course, I mean, if you haven't heard of Diamond and Diamond Personal Injury Lawyers, at least in this part of the world, and again, we are on Sirius XM, right. so we get to all of Canada and the United States and stuff, but a big core right here in Toronto. I mean, you guys are obviously very effective and very well known. Um, what are the majority of cases that people reach out to you for? So it's basically mainly motor vehicle accidents, slip and falls. We get some dog bites. We get some sort of interesting other other ones. I had one lion bite case. That was fun. So, <laughs> what? A lion? <laughs> I did. I had one line bite case. I was. It was very exciting. Where, yeah. where was this? Yeah. I didn't know myself. Apparently, there's private zoos all over Ontario where people house these lions and tigers and bears. And oh my, here we are. And there you go. They don't house them correctly. And sometimes people get bitten. That is insane. <laughs> yeah. Can you talk about if you won or lost that case, or is it? Ninety-nine percent of our cases settled. That one was one uh, that settled because clearly there wasn't much defense to a lion biting somebody. Yeah, it's like a, a <laughs> compare the teeth marks. Like I'm not making this up. That's <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> My goodness, that is like I mean, it, was, it sounds like a Hangover plot or something. It's I, just, it was. <laughs> that's where they call me for their inspiration every time they do one of those movies. Uh, I love it. Uh, Sandra's this kind from Diamond and Diamond Personal Injury Lawyers. Uh, what I mean the. the the harsh reality of your business, though, I guess, is that really that people um, can get really exploited against when when you know the, these type of things are you know whether it's a, a you know a faulty icy slippery laneways Correct. or and and a lot of times people don't have the courage to do and go and do something when they they it's it's been a debilitating disease for themselves well and the problem is like the couple of people that i saw this week they're in the hospital they're laid up their family's laid up the last thing they're thinking about is a pile of insurance forms that they have to fill out one thing that we do is we get in there we help them with the insurance forms we help them with the discharge we have teams available to help them and we're there for them you know when they don't know where else to turn we are there to help facilitate all of this is it safe to say that you know and everyone can say what you want about lawyers and lawyers as lawyers that uh, there really is there's compassion here from your firm look at the end of the day, I love people always call us ambulance chasers and always have derogatory things to say, especially about personal injury lawyers. I think we're hated just as much as politicians. But the reality is I don't get paid unless I'm successful. So I have to believe in my clients as much as they believe in me or I don't get money. So for me to earn a living, I take a gamble on each and every client because I have to wait till the end till I get my percentage because nobody's giving me a retainer. Nobody's saying, here's $20,000, Sandra, go run my case. I just get a percentage at the end. So if the clients don't believe in me and I don't believe in them, I get nothing. I, I really appreciate your candidness, actually, because yeah. a lot of lawyers wouldn't even come on a media and say that. And you got to believe in your clients. So it's, so it's a contingency law, is that essentially? That's what it is. Personal injury is contingency because 99% of my clients cannot afford to give me a twenty or $30,000 retainer to start working on a file. So I take a percentage at the end when we're successful. So my success relies with their success. And, and the thing about contingency law, if, if, and, you know, if you don't understand it, people, and you don't have a grasp of it, is you, you, this way, you, you're like the accountability of your lawyer. And you, know, and, and you guys, Sandra, over at Diamond Diamond and Personal Injury Lawyers, is, is, is 100% there because Correct. they have to be an advocate of what you're going through to get paid. It's not just a money grab. It's not just... 
dockets on the phone and let's right. just sort of, uh, waste your time. It's like, no, the more time they spend with you, that's the, how much more focus they are on the case. Uh, you know, it's it's actually refreshing to hear that, to be honest. Right. And in fact, the the, le- the less time we have the file, the quicker we settle it, the better for me, because that's the only way I make my money. <laughs> oh, because right? you, or else you put in thousands of hours exactly. for a smaller settlement. Exactly. Uh, well, you know, it's uh, it's, it's weird. It's, it's very, it's very <laughs> candid approach. And, and I do appreciate that. Uh, uh, some some news stories going on uh, sure. regarding law. There, there's like a, this uh, alleged terror plot now going in Montreal. What's yeah, going on over there? I have no clue. They're not releasing much of the details, I suspect, because they're still under investigation what they were doing. But it seems like they're popping up all over the place. Now, we have new legislation that's allowing the government to go in and sort of do more there. But um, it's going to be interesting to find out what they were allegedly going to terrorize we know these gentlemen want to leave the country i for one say leave <laughs> don't blow anything up just leave but we have our own laws interesting here. interesting right. if you want to leave just go, before you go, hurt us yeah. go and <laughs> go. Go. Uh, i appreciate that ken and this as well uh, do, do lawyers take a, a close look at this bill c51 law um we from the criminal point of view they're looking at it much more closely obviously to see what the sort of changes are going to be but and and it's going to be interesting of, as to whether or not it stands up constitutionally that's going to be the big issue right because there's been quite a few uh laws recently that just got knocked down including the minimum gun sentence law just got knocked down by the supreme court of canada um the federal government put minimums for people who have a gun or carrying a gun supreme court of canada just threw that out there's a few things they're throwing out and i think you also know about not to jump around but you know about the in center shooting yeah yeah i, I mean i do know about the in center and you just got uh, 30 years right without right, parole so the- um, if I was a betting person, yeah. that's going to the Supreme Court of Canada. So you think that one will get appealed against? I think it will because they're trying to do it on the same basis as those minimum gun sentences, saying it's cruel and unusual punishment. Oh, well, okay. So this was uh, uh, Christopher Hub- Husbands. Was he, the, he was the one who uh, was uh, he was sentenced to life, right? In prison with Correct. no chance of parole uh, for the two revenge murders that made a, tons of news uh, a while ago uh, over at the Eaton Center. So, so interesting. So because of this, explain it to me again. Okay, so how it used to work is... How it used to work in Canada was for first-degree murder, you used to get 25 years. It didn't matter how many people you murdered. You could murder 100 or you could murder one, and you'd get 25 years because it, it was not consecutive. It was always concurrent. Which it could, is in the States, right, if I'm No, correct? in the States, they're wonderful. They give you 125 years. They give you 400 years. On, and they're insane, so we're not even going to pay attention. So what we did here was, what they did here was a lot of victims advocates groups said, hey, you know, that's not really fair because you're basically saying one, one murder murder is good for all like you're only punishing one murder so what they did instead was they changed the parole the parole so they said you can have a 25 you, you can have consecutive sentences uh. and it can go for, for each one and the no no chance of parole for 30 years so this guy got convicted of second degree murder which held 10 to 25 years and he's not eligible for parole for 30 years isn't that interesting and, and one of the first cases of its kind to be Correct. like that Correct. It's called like I think it's called the mass murder law for victim ab- because he, again um, I forgot his name but the there was a guy in Canada that killed eleven children. It was a horrible case. He got twenty five years. People were so upset. Twenty five years for eleven children. Oh, disgusting. So, disgusting. So they came up with this with this compromise to so that we're kind of like our friends to the states but not overboard. It's actually a realistic approach at it exactly. as opposed to saying you know how can you serve four hundred years and you know exactly. <laughs> unless you just kept the body there and let people look at it and remember know. perhaps in texas but not <laughs> yeah. in toronto that's for sure well that you know i will follow that case much more closely that's a really interesting thing to know that uh we you know we have kind of changed and tried to adapt to at least make sure that you're punished the punishment should fit the crime not agreed. just our crimes not just one crime agreed agreed and it gives the victims a sense of justice like i know yeah. even from my end i see sometimes people will come to me to sue people civilly after they don't get their feeling of justice in the criminal system like our good friend Gian Gameshi. We all know he's going to go through the criminal the criminal thing, but for sure he's getting sued civilly as well. They'll come after him for that oh, too. Oh my goodness! And, and that usually results in financial settlements. Is really is yeah. It, that's it, our only sort of crude way of of restoring some form of justice because under the criminal system, as we saw with our infamous O.J. Simpson, uh, you don't have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Just you just have to tip the scales a little bit. 
Uh, it's really interesting stuff. Sandra, I, I, I totally appreciate you for your time. My we, pleasure. we still have a couple other guests, and we got to end the show at six o'clock. So I'm so happy that you came down today Thank and shared stuff. Me. I hope to have you back and, for sure. and do, uh, you know, like like some law updates. Because, Jay, bro, it's, nice to, it's nice to learn this end, and, and it keeps us in check, let's be honest. It's, <laughs> nice, it's, it's nice to talk to a lawyer without a detective behind yeah. it. It's a, it's, a, it's a great experience. You guys are misunderstood. It's very uh, nice. Sandra Ziskind from Diamond and Diamond Personal Injury Lawyers. You'll see him everywhere, but go on their website, diamondlaw.ca, or give them a phone call if you're in the Toronto area, 416-256-1600, 256 1600 Thanks so much. Uh, so Thank much you so time. much. All right, we'll be back. Uh, I believe we have Josh Haddon here, comedian, uh, going through a terrible time with cancer, but what a beauty he is. What an inspiration. In a minute, here on Canada Laugh Channel 168, you're listening to The Todd Shapiro Show. Hey, this is Brian Callum. This is uh, Sirius XM. You are listening to The Todd Shapiro Show, the mother of all comedy shows. This is called Canada Laughs because, you know, it's, it's a laughy show. You laugh sometimes. <laughs> Here's another listener email to The Todd Shapiro Show. Hey, Todd, I really like your shoe. I think he meant show. That was another listener email. To contact the Todd.